Hello everybody and welcome to this first lecture of a DSA course. So in this lecture we're going to talk about what is the data structures and algorithms and also we'll talk about an analysis of algorithms. So let's get started. So what are data structures? Just think of it as, let's say we have a data in our variable. Now we have to store our data and we have to perform some of the mechanism or manipulate our data. So in general, we can define data structure as a way or a format to store the data and organize the data so that it can be used efficiently. So again, I'm repeating that data structures are the way for storing and organizing the data in a way that it can be used efficiently. So this is the formal definition of a data structure. So for example, we have all linked lists, stacks, queues, and etc. We'll talk about more detail of it very much in our later course. So just for now, as a data structure, we can store or manipulate or we can store that our data and manipulate our data so it can be used efficiently. Okay, so let's talk about uh, data types. So there are two types of data types like a uh, user defined data types and a uh, system defined data types. So first let's talk about a uh, system defined data types. So what are system defined data types? The data types which are already being defined by the particular programming language are a system. Like in teaser, floating point number, boolean number, boolean value, and etc. These are the already defined in any programming language. Like in Java, Python, C, even C++. So these, these are the system defined data types. And along with that data types, we, we had a, we can do the operations whatever we wanted to do. We can add the data, we can subtract the data, we can multiply the data, we can divide the data, we can do the, any kind of operations we want to do that because system defined data, system defined data types defines the data types as well along with the op operations are also defined. So we can define system defined data types as the data types which are defined by the system along with operations. Okay, so what is user defined data types? So if you're coming from any programming language like a C, C++, Java, so in C you have a structures, in Java you have a class. So in user defined data types, we have to define the data type by ourselves. Like in functions, we have to define the functions by yourself if you want to make a function. So in again in data types, you have to define your data type by yourself and user defined data types along with operations. So we have defined our data type and if you want to do any kind of operations, you have to pull out the operations and that data type. Okay, so user defined data types is we have to define the data type along with operations. But it is a little bit more complicated. So for simplifying this process, we have uh, ADT. So what we do, we'll talk about ADT in just a second. So we combine our data structure with, with the, these, these types of user-defined data types with the operations. So we combine data structures with the operations, whatever is needed, we combine them. And then this, this is called the abstract data types okay so we what we do for simplifying the process of for user defined data types we combine both like a data structure and our operations what we want to do with that data type we combine them and then you will get a, that that's called a abstract data types some examples of abstract data types are linked lists stacks queues and etc. So these are the examples of ADTs. And I hope that you got a better intuition about data structures and about abstract data types. Okay, so just remind this video if you're not understood and just take a look at the notes and along with notes just watch my videos. Okay, so now what is an algorithm? So we have talked about a data structure but what is an algorithm? So just take one more one example, like a preparing an omelette. 
So, uh, you want to prepare an omelette. So, what are steps you want to, you are going to take? So, first of all, you'll take a pan and then you'll move on the next step. Then, then you will search for the oil. And if the oil is there, then you will go for the further process. If oil is not there, you will buy the oil. Either you will leave making the omelette. And then you will proceed the further things. So, this is the step by step process of instructions for making an, a good omelette. Okay? So, just like this, in general, an algorithm is the same. An algorithm is a step by step. Instructions are a straightforward instructions, or it may not be straightforward instructions to solve a particular set of problem. So, what is an algorithm? Just like a, an omelet, we are giving the step by step process for uh, preparing an omelet. So, in 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 kind of an algorithm. So, we, in in a problem, we are going to provide a machine a step by step straightforward instructions for solving a particular set of problem and that's called an algorithm okay pretty much easy what i'm trying to say you here and i hope that you got better intuition about algorithm so let's take one one example like let's say you want to go from point a to point b so yeah let's say you are in a uh, patna or in Bihar, and you want to go Delhi or Kolkata. So how do we go that? You can go either with the bus, you can go either with even with the motorcycle, either you can go with a car, either we can you can go with a flight, and then you can go with a train. There are tons of transports. So, so on the basis of availability and convenience, we're going to choose one of the modes of transport. So, on the basis of availability of the modes of transport and the convenience of the modes of transport, we are going to choose one kind of modes of transport. And after analyzing the things like availability, situation, convenience, and then we will choose one mode of transport and it can be anything. Okay? So, after analyzing the thing, we find out a good way to go from Bihar to Kolkata, so we, we find a good, after analyzing, we found a good kind of mode of transport and then we can move further, okay? So this is called the analysis of our transport. So in the same way, in computer science, what we do, there are a lot of algorithms for a particular problem. Let's say you want to do the sorting uh, of an array. So there are a, a bubble sort selection sort, merge sort, and etc. So these are the various kind of algorithms. So which one to use? That's a problem that ar arises. So uh, we analyze the things on the basis of some, some sets of uh, parameters and after that we pick out some, al which, uh, some algorithm which fits the best upon our availability, convenience, and situation. Okay? So this is the analysis of algorithms. Understood what is the analysis of algorithms? So by taking uh, simple simple examples. Okay, so now let's talk about how do we compare the algorithms? How do we choose the best algorithms? So for comparing the algorithms or choosing the best algorithms, let's take some of the objectives. First objective is execution timings. Does this help us to achieve or compare the two algorithms? Absolutely no. It is not going to be able. It is not be able to compare the algorithm because the reason why it is not going to do that because we want to come. We want to see that because the execution time will be totally dependent upon the machines. Let's say in your in computer A, it performs the same same task in difference in in some a time of execution time and another is from the same problem in different execution time so they are not equivalent so we can we can't go with execution timing for comparing the algorithms so what is the next objective the next objective is is that a number of statements for any Korean language like let's say a python and a java in java if you want to write a uh, kind of uh, code, uh, this will be a uh, very long and if you compare it with Python, this will be very short for the same problem. 
So, we can't compare with the statements because it's totally based upon Premier language. As Java is a little bit faster than Python, so what we can do that that we can't do compare comparison on the basis of the statements of Premier languages. So now our third objective and the last objective is ideal solution. What does that mean? That simply means we are going to we are going to compare with the running time on the basis of a function of an input. What, what I tell to you, this is a little bit confusing. So, what we are going to do on the basis of input size of an algorithm, let's say we have an algorithm, we are going to provide an input size, and on the basis of this input size, the algorithm will perform different, different things. Okay, so on the basis of this, if the, if the, if the, input is very large then the execution then the timing will be very large and then if this input is very small the timing will be very small so on the basis of uh, the function of an input f of n will denote we'll talk about in next video the f of n here n is the number of inputs so on the basis of a number of, of input we are going to we are going to talk about a running time so let's talk more about in the detail so you can get a better intuition behind that so the rate of growth. So what is the rate of growth? So on the basis of our function f of n, which is an input function, which is which describes the size of the input, on the basis of a size of the input, the running time will also increase, and that's called the rate of growth. Okay? So on the if if the input input size is large, then the rate of growth will be large, and the input size is very small, then the rate of growth will be very small. Okay, so this is called all those things. I think it's clear and the third objective passes our kind of a comparing two algorithms. So on the basis of our input size, we're going to compare two algorithms or n kind of compare our algorithms. Okay, so these are so these are the six acts that we have talked till now. So one more detail is left is there are three cases for analysis and analysis of an algorithm. So there are three cases for analysis. The first case is worst case. In worst case, it defines your input, uh, your defines your function of an input like uh, your input. Uh, if your input is very large, then it will be worst case because it defines your input as an algorithm perform a very bad because it, it takes a lot of time for on the basis of your input. So it's a worst case. The best case is that your algorithms find that you. Your, your, your algorithms done the set of problem in very quick time. So, on the basis of your input. So, that is a, a best case. And then we have an average case, which takes an average time for, uh, for an algorithm for a particular input. Okay? So, this is how uh, we have talked about till now. And this is how all the analysis works. And I hope that you got a better intuition. So, one more the thing that how to found the upper bound or a lower bound or a, that kind of thing like how to compare the things mathematically or how do we do in a real life or practically i have to tell you theories so we have a syntax which is often called a asymptotic notations the first asymptotic notation is big o notation the second one is omega notation and the third one is Theta notation. We'll, we'll talk about this in more detail in our next video at the time complexity analysis. So this is an introductory part about what is the data structures and algorithms. And I hope that you've written information about data structure and algorithm and analysis of an algorithm. Then how do we compare it to algorithm, the worst case of an algorithm, and etc. So I hope that you will be carrying out of the next video and you will definitely like this video and subscribe this YouTube channel and press the notification bell and also check out the notes just after this session. So just scroll down the notes, see, see the notes, what is that and then download it and you will print it out and then see, see the notes, what is there and try to understand and in the next video we'll come with it. Uh, we'll, I will talk about a time complexity analysis. Okay, so that's it for this video. I'll be catching up on the next video. Till then, bye-bye.